check it out. This is what I got at a garage sale. Now, um, some of it's falling apart. These are one of the little beads, but it is uh, evidently a wine rack. Now, the bottom two, I'm assuming, are where the glasses are kept and then the wine bottles up here, but here's my thing with this. Um, it wasn't very well designed because it doesn't really fit. You have to cram it all the way through, then finagle it around, and I think maybe two bottles could be stored there, but that really wasn't my concern because, well, I don't drink red wine. I'm allergic to it, so and I rarely drink white wine, but if I do, it's kept in the fridge. Um, but I couldn't resist it because it's got little sparklies. Anything with glass on it generally just attracts me. I, it's just something I have to get, especially when it's only five bucks. So what I've decided to do with this is make it something that can go into our guest bathroom and you, be used for storage. If you're keeping track at home, we have gone from purchase to prep for prime, and we now have not one, but two of these little glass grapes that have fallen off. It is time for prime. Uh, a bit of advice for priming when it comes to brushes. Prime paint, its whole design is to stick one to the other and keep them bonded, and that includes the paint getting on the brush. This is a brush I've used multiple times with other colors, and it's just gotten old, and it's a good, it's a sturdy, good handle brush. I like it, but it's time to move on. So now it is a prime brush. A uh, big thing with prime cleanup brushes as far as get it into water immediately as soon as possible before you go through the process of actually cleaning them. If you are not up for cleaning the brushes, then just my biggest advice is don't use a brush you care about or paid a lot about for because it just never completely recovers after being used as a prime brush. Well, this thing took a really long time to paint. If I had to do it from scratch, meaning I didn't already have a half gallon of prime paint just sitting in my garage, I would have used a spray paint to do it. And another thing I could tweak, even with my half gallon of prime paint, because it's, it's gonna do the job great, it's the fact that I used this much larger brush than I needed. If I used a smaller brush, I could have gotten into the smaller places a lot easier and may have made it go faster, but I didn't want to waste a brush seeing as I already had this one brush that was, well, you know, ready to be a prime brush. So those are some tips to do again. If you had nothing else in supplies at home, spray paint anything with lots of teeny tiny crevices and hard to get to places, the spray can get into it much easier. But if you're like me and you already have some paint in the garage, go for it. Well, it's happened again. I primed something and all of a sudden with the white on it, I think, you know, I kind of like it white. So I changed my plans all up again. Now, the camera's not really picking this up, but it's really just a hint of white. It's not solid white. So I am going to go back through and do some chalk paint. But before I can do the chalk paint, got to do some sanding. tip I'd offer when you're painting something, uh, this is way detailed, um, I always leave my dry end, which is basically there's this one part of this whole thing that I'm really not going to paint until the very end. That way when I need to maneuver it and manipulate anything, I don't have to worry about, oh, am I going to get all full of paint or I'm going to mess up painting. It's an area that's not painted all the way through. 
And I just kind of keep it all the way up and I move it up as I go. And finally, that'll be the tip. And then I make sure that's the last thing I paint. It's just a little time saver. All right, so we've gotten this puppy all painted up. It's all white and it's, it's looking kind of cute as is. This is perfectly a great place to stop if that's what you want to do. Um, I would recommend you put a top coat on it. Of course, because it's white, you'd want to go with a, maybe a wax, then a polyurethane, or some maybe a lacquer, because a polyurethane is going to leave it tinting slightly yellow. And I am definitely going into a bathroom that its primary colors are white and gray. So I don't want to do that. If I were to stop here, I'd go ahead and just put a wax on it and be very happy. But I'm going to risk it and go a little bit further. All right, so I thought about doing some more integral details, you know, with the, like a print that I looked up online. I thought, you know, Matt, why don't I do something really wild and different? And then it just occurred to me how nice it would be if these were just each different colors. Now, not realistic fall colors, but actually popping bright, fun colors. So I got out my uh, Michael's paint kit and I'm gonna go to town on this. All right, I'm kinda at a crossroads between two ideas. I was thinking either these seven sort of vibrant, sort of like, I, I got a hint of the 70s, but these colors, you know, popping bright, happy colors. And then I thought, wait a minute, wouldn't it be cool, as long as my lovely paint set has them, these are all metallics. So it'll have a bit of a shine to it. And I did a test. I took purple, because I was gonna do the top purple anyway because of the beads. You know I love my glass beads. This is what I've done on the top with the purple that's metallic. I kinda like it. So I think I'm gonna go with the metallic paints. The cool thing is, is if I go through this and I hate it, I'll just repaint it. Quick brush tip. I had a series of these brushes that I bought in a bag and one of them was excellent. But the rest have all been a little too bendy. I guess they're more or less watercolor brushes and they're supposed to be really light and flexible, although these are massive. So I had one that was kind of similar to this one, but I went ahead and because I wanted it to be stiffer, you see how it would be stiffer here? I went ahead and just cut it off. I mean, I got all these brushes. I thing for under five bucks. May as well make sure they're useful. Okay, it looks like everything's dry and ready to go, so it's time for a top coat on all the white parts. I'm going to do my classic standard wax because I don't want it to actually have a shine. I just want it to be protected. And then I'm going to do on the colorful leaf parts, I'm going to go ahead and use my polyurethane water-based, and um, then it will be done. Two coats, by the way, on both of them. By the way, if you haven't already, could you please subscribe? Oh, and hit the bell. It'll give you a little alert when I do a new video. Thanks. All right, it's nighttime, but I couldn't wait anymore. As long as everything's dry, it's time to unveil. So far, so good. Haven't lost any more. See, now I kind of love how the grapes are actually just Hopping on this thing, you actually see my beautiful glass grapes. Ooh, I got some paint to chip off on this one. Not too bad though. All right, two are off. 
We're getting some bottom ones here, hopefully not losing any more. Oh yay yay. Whew. Okay, if you've been keeping track at home, we are from purchase to completion, three grapes gone. And I'm so bummed because I really, really intended that I was going to make sure somehow, some way I got them back on. But uh, after stabbing my fingers a number of times, I just couldn't get those little tiny copper wires that are in here that are part of, you know, how they hung on. And I just can't get them out. If you have any advice on what I can do with that, I would really appreciate it. Please comment below. Otherwise, here it is in its completed form. I'm really thrilled and uh, I think I should just take you into the bathroom to see where it belongs now. Well, here we have it. Our finished wine rack transformation. It is now given to a paper roll holder and I love it. <laughs>